Well, yes, everything went into a central pool that no one knew anything about. No one knew how many reserve, uh, how much Bitcoin was actually held by Mt. Gox really. And uh, when it disappeared, no one knew what their holdings were. So was the issue transparency or not? In part, yes. And how transparent are you going to be? Completely. It, it will be, I mean, the, the whole idea of anything you want to make from a supernode wallet is really something where every single deposit can be accounted for. An independent auditor should be able to grab at will everything on your section of the blockchain and make sure that the deposits that you have on your, um, your account, the withdrawals, everything add up correctly so that you can prove the current balance of each depositor equals a certain total and that total is actually held. And that's doable. And you don't need to actually say who each depositor is to do that. So you can have the level of an an um, anonymity coupled with the whole 100 point check thing, the whole reporting to government, whatever else. So would your company would protect the anonymity? Would that be kind of like a guarantee? As far yeah. as any other guarantee is under law. Yeah. If we're um, acting in the US market and we get a, a federal warrant from um, Department of Treasury and they say, please give over these details, then we will. Australian Federal Police come and say, this person's suspected of drug running. Then we give over the details. In the future, where we're really headed is anyone can do these sorts of things. I mean, the whole um, professional services market's going to change as well, but that's a, a separate area. I mean, auditors will still be needed. They'll still need to advise on tax laws. They'll still need to advise on international movement and funds and transactions and whatever else. But the way that it's going to be will allow for automated um, continuous audits. One of the areas I've worked on in the past was the idea of continuous audits. This goes back quite a number of years now. Um, but what it means is you can have the board or the corporation or in the future the DAC and the controlling uh, agents know exactly what the position of the company is to the nanosecond. Not down the track when we consolidate reports and 60 days later we see where we are, but to the nanosecond. Meaning that an independent auditor doesn't even need to be appointed. It can just be open sourced. There are people out there who like to trawl through records. They can trawl through the records of BHP and see whether they can find any fraud. They can look for any tax evasion and come back and report that. They can do it just because they want to. A government can help control their own systems by offering bounties rather than having uh, trained operatives or whatever else, they can offer a bounty. You find any fraud in these companies, which you don't need to actually go into and investigate in the normal ways, you just come up and, and find something on a public blockchain and you report it to us and we give you a bounty. So the whole idea of how audit will move will be more towards ensuring that good advice is given, that you use the right people, you structure things in the right way, I mean, when, you, when we're setting up assurance contracts or DAC contracts or anything like this, the real secret's going to be programming the right thing at the outset. Bitcoin will allow us to actually simplify the whole process of how courts work, how mediation works. But the key will be getting the correct input. Garbage in, garbage out. We're working on um, uh, distributed autonomous um, social organisations, distributed autonomous corporations, the AI behind that. Um, part of what I do is um, I create PSOs. PSOs. Uh, PSOs are evolutionary code. So they're bits of artificial intelligence code that compete. So as I said, I like competition, but the idea is you have swarm-based technology. You make lots and lots of little pieces of code. And you have the code go out there and change its own algorithm and compete with existing code. And using blockchain, you can have it have ownership. 
it can own so much on a bit uh, so many Bitcoin, for instance. And the code that loses dies off. If it can't afford to buy for its own computer time, it starves. The code that wins, you spawn. So the same way evolution works in the, the real world, we actually start creating code that goes out there and splits and spawns. And we're going to start trying to do this so that we can create things that by themselves help us because they're going to be looking for ways of finding money. Yes. In the Bitcoin world, nothing ever gets lost. Everything can be stored forever. Universal history. It doesn't mean everyone will know everything about you because you, you do have privacy and you can create applications for privacy. But you can store that, not only um, the, the invoice when you go down to buy something at the shop so that you can just click a button and your tax is filed so that you know what your position is, but everything you've done. When I buy a ticket and go to Melbourne and I sign in using my Bitcoin wallet, I know where I've been, where I link that because I've got a, a cryptographically assigned IP address that is linked to um, a um, geo-positioning device that stores my geo um, IP data, then I can link all of that and store it. And everything can then link back as we develop new types of social networks, as we have not just a Facebook, but an integrated everything device where we have our Google Glass that captures and stores what we're doing, what we're paying for. Whether we want that, and some, many people won't like the fact that it'll be harder to lie to ourselves because if we're, we're sitting there going, well, I'm not really breaching my diet, and then you click and actually see what you've done and you've eaten 8,000 calories in the last three days, whatever else, it, it's going to change how we think. We can still lie to ourselves, we just don't check the data. But what we actually do means that we have a record of everything. Everything starts now. Every bit of code that we write and we test takes time. And some of our projects are five to 10 years and just the starter projects. And some of them have been running for a few years now. And eventually these things will be released and eventually they'll update and they'll change. And I have no idea where they'll be myself. I know we're using, I mean, one of the earlier projects I had was monitoring oil prices. And we used Twitter feeds, and we used Facebook, and we used political sources, and we fed that into um, a variety of different algorithms and monitored what people were saying, what they were doing, and how that might affect oil prices. And rather than me being the statistician coding all of that, I code a few initial start conditions, things that I think would be valid. And then I code a variety of different ways that it's going to change over time. And I let things randomly corrupt and have random errors. And then you let them all compete. And see you, what survives. Yeah, see what survives. Buy sell contracts and which one ends up rich, which one ends, ends up starving. Because ultimately the one that survives is the one you want, right? Exactly. And it's not always the one you, you actually believe would have been the one that survives. I got that. <laughs> um, so as Bitcoin in Australia, where are we on the map? How do you think we're competing, for want of a better word, with the rest of the world? I think we're competing extremely well. Yeah. I think there's a lot of research and a lot of work being done in Australia. Uh, most people just don't realise how much is being done in Bitcoin not just here in Australia, but globally and everywhere. And that'll probably stay that way for quite some time. If we were to put us in the Petri dish with the rest of these sellers, how would we compete, do you think? Where would you put your money on Australia? I think Australia is probably um, far bigger than anyone realises. Very nice. And easy. can we just add some, say that again and then just add the context of why afterwards? Mm. That becomes a hard question. How do you 
back that claim. Mm. Mm. That would be moving a little too much. Yeah, but, but with whatever you can say at this point in time. Mm. That probably gets a bit far. I mean, there are OS industry projects and other such things that I know about, and there's many other bits of research that are being done, but... But is it, again, is it the people, the mentality of the people? Is it the statistics that you're finding, you're gathering? Is it um, the, the rate of adoption? What quantifies your claim? Mm. It's more the fact that certain individuals... Sorry? It's more the fact that there are certain individuals who are... Individuals and projects.